Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, happy midweek. It's Wednesday, and today's also June 1st. Pretty amazing to think about, isn't it? The very first day of June. Well, I hope you're having a great week. I hope you will comment in the comment section. We love to read those. And I hope you'll share these every day on your Facebook page. We're going through the um, life of the prophet Elijah. And um, today, we're going to kind of see over the next several days, how the reign of King Ahab comes to an end. Now, remember I told you that I call the Elijah story the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, the good is Elijah, the bad is King Ahab, the ugly is Queen Jezebel. And now we're going to start to see Ahab's reign come to an end. Now, let me start reading in chapter 20 of 1 Kings, verse 1. It says, Now Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, that's Syria, gathered an army, and there were 32 kings with him. So it's a 32-nation alliance that is a huge army, and it says they had horses and they had chariots, so they are powerful. That's like tanks today. And he went up and he besieged Samaria to fight against it. So he wants to eliminate that area that, of course, Ahab is the king over. He demands all the royal possessions, if you keep reading. Uh, he insists on sending in troops that would take anything they wanted. And after consulting with the elders, Ahab refuses. And Ben-Hadad threatens to completely destroy the city. Now, here's what happens, beginning in verse 13. Now, behold, a prophet approached Ahab, king of Israel, and said, Thus says the Lord, Have you seen this great multitude? 32-nation confederacy. Behold, I, God says, will deliver them into your hand, and you will know that I am the Lord. Now, you would think Ahab would have that down already because of what happened on Mount Carmel a few chapters back, but he still doesn't get it. Ahab said, By whom? And so the prophet said, thus says the Lord, I'll do it by the young men of the rulers of the provinces. And he said, who shall begin the battle? And the Lord answered, you will, Ahab. Then he mustered the young men of the rulers of the provinces. There were 232. After them, he mustered all the people and ultimately had an army of 7,000. So here's Ahab. He's got an army of 7,000, but he's going up against a 32-nation confederacy. The odds are not in his favor. So here's what happens. Let me just kind of give you the points. Ahab's army attacks ben Hadid, who's overconfident. They suffer great losses, the Syrians do. And the prophet now tells Ahab, get ready, there's going to be a counterattack. The Syrians wrongly thought that the God of Israel was a God of the hills. That's where uh, Ahab had attacked them. They said, let's go down into the plains. Their God won't fight for them there. So again, the prophet assures Ahab that even though there's 100,000 Syrians, God will give them into his hand. Now, Here's what happens. Israel's reputation of showing mercy causes the Syrians to beg for their lives. And you know what Ahab does? He agrees. He makes a covenant with them. Here's the problem. It wasn't his decision to make. He didn't win the battle. God did. Listen to what it says in verse 42. Thus says the Lord to Ahab, because you have let go out of your hand the man whom I devoted to destruction, I told you to destroy him, therefore your life will go for his life, your people for his people. So the king of Israel went to his house, sullen and vexed, and came to Samaria. You know what Ahab does? He doesn't give God the credit at all for the great victory. He takes the credit. He enters into this covenant without even consulting the God who gave him the victory. And this is going to result in Ahab's demise. Never forget this, folks. It's always better when we listen to God and give God all the credit and our total obedience. Well, we'll see what happens to Ahab again tomorrow. I've run a little bit long today, but I hope you'll be back tomorrow morning and we'll see how Ahab's life comes to an end. Have a great Wednesday.